First off, when you love what you do, you don't have a job. And when you jump in the shower in the morning and you start thinking about stuff that you're going to do and creative things, uh, and then you, you I, I work in my house, so I run up to my office and I basically write down my ideas and I basically innovate and I'm always doing new products and new, um, new ideas. So that's what I do and I love to do it. So it's, it's sort of like someone who's a writer loves to write, I love to create. I love to create products and you know associated with health and wellness. That's what we do. Your goal is to win, right? So once you, you know, develop a product line, you go against multinationals, and I'm just a little guy, right? So it's not the big that eat the small, it's the fast that eat the slow. So we're very fast with our innovation, uh, we're cutting edge, and when we develop a product over three years, four years, seven years, and that catches the eyes of companies like Coca-Cola and, and Carrie, Dr. Pepper, and Pepsi and Nestle, and they're all fighting for your brand. That, that is winning, okay? And that, that is our goal. So we create um, products that are cutting edge in both design and ingredients. And it's, it's a good idea is the first sign of trouble because you have to have 100 people with the same vision as you to, you know, get the product out on all the store shelves and merchandise and advertise. So it's just not one little thing. It's a plethora of different activities. And I think I'm very good at that. I couldn't do it without my wife. She's my inspiration. And when you're so happy in your, in your life, in your family, it, it propels you, it, you know, it, it motivates you. And I love that, you know, my family's proud of me. And that's probably the best payoff. Linda inspires me. She, she basically tells me when I'm doing something right and something wrong. Mm -hmm. And just the way she is, she motivates me. And she gives me a lot of confidence, which is something that every man needs when he's trying to build something. So she's like my rock of Gibraltar, basically. And I can always lean on her. If I have a bad day, I talk to Linda. If I have a great day, I talk to Linda. So she's my partner in everything I do. It didn't alter in terms of um, dimension. It didn't uh, affect in terms of character and who we are. It didn't change in terms of it's, we live in the same space. We are the same as we came when she first met me at the door and I was I met my husband and we are basically the same. But as my husband said, he got a, a chance or an opportunity to develop three other, for us to make three other little babies that he sees, you know, a, a way of um, giving back to the world as maybe ironic as it sounds. We, you know, we would like to partner with um, some environmental groups that we now have a little bit of platform stronger than we had before, about five, six years ago, that we could have an impact. So I believe that uh, that helped. But here's the CEO, so talk to my, my right wing. What the money has done is giving us a platform to give back more and in a bigger impact that uh, we were able to do that before. So different resources in different ways came now. Just yesterday, my husband and I, we, um, we funded this school back in 2010 in Kenya. It's called Light School Wuriri. And just yesterday, um, we raised enough money to buy those children a school bus. 
so that those children are not anymore, they were girls raped uh, back and forth from their school to, to mm -hmm. um, homes. Um, and my husband, without a blink in an eye and without an hesitation, when I proposed what we should do, he knew exactly what the right answer was. And we made it happen. And when we saw those pictures of those little, you know, students, um, six, nine-year-old to 14-year-olds, how I know we changed their lives and probably made their dreams come true. Other groups, we do support the Red Syndrome. Most girls develop normally till they're about one or two years old, and then they have a regression. It's like having autism, Parkinson's, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, all in one little girl. I think the worst part is, is not being able to understand what's happening with your child day in and day out, and then not being able to communicate with you, and it, it's just frustrating all around. Then you add the fact that she's in physical pain almost every day of her life. She has a crooked spine, she has digestive issues, complications, she has a breathing disorder. And you know, we're the lucky ones. Which is very close to our hearts. Brent Shapiro. <sighs> the Brent Shapiro, our friend uh, Bob Shapiro, who has lost uh, his son over drugs and um, alcohol. Tonight, you we're here to talk about awareness of sobriety and the importance of prevention. Plain and simple, trying to keep kids from starting to experiment with drugs at a young age. Because we know if they start using drugs before the age of 15, the likelihood of a lifelong problem goes up dramatically. So we have established six Brent's Clubs in association with the Boys and Girls Club of America, where our kids test once a week with saliva in a group setting to make it cool to say we're sober, and they get rewards. And tonight, one of our first members, four years ago, is getting a college scholarship for graduating as a sober high school student. That is gonna continue. That is, we do scholarships every single year and we now are taking care of 2,000 kids in Brent's clubs. And we're really making such a change in all of these kids' lives. It's really a, an amazing thing to see. But we, we support, a, I would like to say, a bunch of other good foundations. I'm working very hard on trying to improve the world now. I think I'm in a very good position. I can use my power and my leverage to uh, uh, infiltrate the consumer products market with sustainable products. Uh, Lynn and I have researched um, recyclable uh, bottles that are made um, from other old bottles. Every year in the United States, consumers use literally billions of plastic bottles just like this. But after you toss it into the recycle bin, do you ever wonder where it goes? Well, about 20% of those bottles end up right here at Carbon Light Industries. This is the largest facility of its kind here in the United States. And Leon, the chairman, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Nice meeting you. Good, you're gonna take us Good. on a tour. Show yeah. us around, yeah? Definitely, here you go. This is for me? Please put your safety hat and hold that on before we can go in. Okay, I gotta suit up. Suit up. Wow, this place is huge. For instance, if we we have friends and I'm in, we are investors in a, a company that actually takes truckloads of plastic bottles that are destined for the landfill. And what they do is they take the, that plastic and they sterilize it, they clean it, they melt it, and it goes back into these big totes. It's sent to my plant, which makes these little plastic preforms, and we, re, we re-blow the bottles so they're reborn. So all that plastic that was heading for the landfill is reused in a sustainable manner. So there's a lot of products now that are being shipped 10, 12,000 miles from islands like Fiji, uh, Norway, uh, France, and you know, it's water on water. 
So the sustainability of those products to us is not good for the, the world and our children. So we're trying to make a difference in our business um, strategy in terms of packaging. So we're working very hard on that. Uh, we will make a change and we'll tie that into other chari charitable activities. You are all consumed in family business. You're raising a child, doing all the things that mothers do. You participate in endless philanthropic events all the time. You're all over town at these very, very, very worthwhile fundraisers constantly. I've got two questions. First, how do you do all that stuff? And second, why don't you have people around you to help out? Why have you elected to do it all by yourself? Well, I, how to answer to your question, how do I do that? It's basic motherhood instinct. Same instinct as when you fell in love with someone you marry and you will be there forever for each other. When you have a child, same thing my husband would say to me in the morning, how do you do it all? And I just, I, I, I do it, yeah, good. <laughs> I love it. And as I see it with his job, when you love your job, is not a job. When you love what you do, it's not a job, but it's, it's your passion becomes who you are. I didn't know I'm gonna be a mom, but here I am. I love it and I just do it. What we do enjoy is that we take Henry with us everywhere we go. And even if I would one, one night, oh, let's just be the two of us tonight. My husband would be like, I miss Henry, no. Let's just be together with Henry. And I'm like, yeah. It's just, we just love to have everything together with Henry and we're just, uh, we're just a team. It's really motherhood, but at the same time, my husband is just so involved. You know, we are so blessed that our office is where we live. The headquarters, yeah, we do have main offices um, some other places, but my husband and I, we work from home. We get to see our baby in the morning. We get to do breakfast together, as you know, and we get to put the baby to bed together. First of all, it's like that Beatles song, it's all you need is love. <laughs> all right, so um, Wendy and I fell in love at first sight, and um, you know, I realized how smart and special she is. And um, you know, it's we built a company, we built two companies together at, one, at the same time. And there's not a decision, a big decision that I, I get involved with without asking my wife's advice and her, her opinion. Uh, whether it's product development or marketing, um, she's always got the right answer. You know, and you don't need this artist, you need, you know, just focus on the bottle for now. When you get more distribution, we'll get a superstar, okay? So she helped me build these businesses. I couldn't have done it without her love and my love for her. And it's sort of like a great um, partnership. It's a great partnership. In the beginning, like she made all the model shoots. My wife's an ex-model. She's a great model. And she was, you know, in her yoga clothes doing it's to be true to your core with bottles. And we, we had some fantastic ads and fantastic shoots. I would go there, shoot a range of photographer, the makeup artist, everything. So we had all these great pictures. But I said, you know what? Now that we've, you know, we're, we're in the big time leagues, I want to put billboards up all over the country for you. So she was all over Times Square. She was, she was best location in LA, several locations. And it was my ode to her. It was my ode to her for being my better half, you know? And you can't do it unless you have love and a partner who supports everything you do. And again, it, goes, comes, it goes, comes down to my, my wife and my son. 
-hmm. and we have a daughter too it's, it's her stepdaughter mm -hmm. and our family comes first and now we're on to the next chapter of trying to help the world that's that's our big goal the first time you went out on the street looked up and saw a billboard of yourself the height of a 10-story building how did it make you feel and what were your thoughts about your husband and this expression of generosity and gratitude? I started crying and made me, made me proud of my husband being so bold in his courage to do this. He, his vulnerability, his love, showing it in that aspect. And that, like you said, 10 feet high building I could, I mean, he didn't have to, and it's not, again, reaching down in the pockets because it's easy and just, he could, it just, it, it's not about that. It's just being bold in the decision to be so vulnerable, to show that kind of a love and appreciation for, for, um, for our mutual love and for our mutual support and trust and, and this partnership as, as he's, he says it, and it's right. It's everything from the beginning, it's been the same.